So hi everyone, may Jesus be with us tonight. Um, I'm going to talk today about the message that uh, Yolanda just uh, read from Our Daily Bread. So it's chapter 90, 92, so it's entitled God Does Not Forsake You. So as um, Problem with the okay. <clears throat> what's happening with okay? Uh, we have to do this way. So, so, um, so in this chapter, it, it basically talks about um, God. Uh, how merciful God is with us, right? So, um, it's uh, the passage itself, it's an explanation that Emmanuel gave to this uh, short uh, passage from John. It comes from the Revelations, where it says, I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So, as we see here, there are two, pa two, two parts to the sentence, right? So, the first one, it it, they, it, God is saying that it, it, he gave time for her to, to repent from her immorality, right? So from the wrongdoings. And that means it gave another chance, right? And on the last sentence it says, but she is unwilling. So how do we uh, apply that to ourselves, right? So sometimes people say that uh, we have created this notion of God, that God does not... Uh, forgive us, right? Like uh, anything that we do wrong, there is like this uh, notion of eternal punishment. And this, uh, and this uh, philosophy was true, it's still today, it's true, right? So some people still preach that, that the, the, the eternal punishment from God. So, but what this passage uh, tells us is that God is always giving us the opportunity to to repent and to, to do right, even if we have done something wrong, right? So the meaning of repent, I also uh, got some words for the Portuguese speakers. <coughs> so repent it means to feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. So anything wrong that we do, so if we have this sincere regret, so that's that's the meaning of repent. So, so in this case, God, have, uh, have given her time to repent of her morality. And so how does Scripture help us to understand this? So, I mean, the meaning of giving time to repent, what does that mean, right? So how does Scripture explain that? So we know that um, for our own, our own wrongdoings, we, we have doing that for a long time, like for many lives. So, so that means God has always given us the opportunity to, to repent and then sometimes we resist to fail, right? So it's something that we need to think about our own actions and, and make use of all we have today. Like the spiritual doctrine explain us why we're here, why we suffer, so it gives, it gives us uh, a very deep explanation, even about God. So the idea that we have from God being a punisher is because that's the way we are, right? So, so or that's the way we would act, or not long ago, that's the way we act, right? So even today, how many times we, we kind of uh, be so nervous with situations like we want to... So that's, that's our nature. So then we, we picture God the same way, like the punisher, so anything wrong that you do, you're going to be punished. And with spiritism, it, we, we have this new clarity, like this new vision that we, of course, are responsible for our own happiness. And this happiness is going to be a result of our, our actions. And if we do something wrong, it doesn't mean that God is going to abandon us. 
So that's that's why the title, right? God does not forsake you because even even though you insist to do wrong things, He will still be giving you the opportunities to come back. So give you the chance to repent, right? But th this repent has to be from the from the, from the bottom of your heart, like you have to feel it, like express sincere regret. Not only try to show off, show off, like ah, I, I, I have to repent. I feel repent. I feel I. It has to to be from inside. So many people insist on the rigid and irrevocable determination decisions. So that's also a fragment from the passage that was just read from the daily bread. So as we can see here. Something so it's a stable definition. So many people still think that uh, God is rigid, right? It's uh, he he has like uh, always condemning people, um, never change. You know, like uh, if you do something wrong, that's it. You're gonna be in hell forever, right? So that's the, the notion that some people still have, right? Some religions. Well, with spiritism, we know that. If you do something wrong, that's going to put you on a track that you need to go through three steps. First, you have to have this feeling, the repeat, repent, right? To feel it. the next episode is that. So, the fact that you start thinking about what you it's already so explanation because because it's gonna that state that oh I should shouldn't be doing that. But that, that that's not enough, right? Or you, you can even suffer some consequence from that wrongdoing. And then the third step is that you have to repair. So we know that we have to go through the through the those three steps. And and that's that's like a, a law of God. So he he established that law. And if we decided to do the wrong thing, we have to go through that path to, to come back. So that's not that does, that does not mean that God is like a punisher, but it's he's just just. So that's the law of justice, right? So he established uh, certain laws that we need to follow. Whenever we deviate from that, that's the path that's going to take us back. So, but he always give us the opportunity to come back and to repair right our but what god has is irrevocable mercy it means what is revocable means it's not able to change reverse or it's final right so so in his mercy god is irrevocable so the gifts and callings of god are irrevocable even in the bible there is there is this passage so that means that God is always, always like with open arms for us when we decide to take the right path. So it doesn't matter how wrong we did, I mean, what the things that we do, He's always willing to help us. And then uh, there is the chapter 10 uh, on the Gospel according to Spiritism which is entitled, Blessed are the Merciful. And, and it's seven. Blessed are the Merciful. This chapter is going to talk about mercifulness. Um, but for me, for, for our uh, study today, I just got this uh, small passage from the same chapter where it says uh, from the passage entitled forgive so that God will forgive you. So in other sense, this, this notion of mercifulness, forgiveness, right? So if we study the chapter, we will see that it's going to talk a lot. There's not seven times, but 70 times seven. He was actually teaching us that mercy should have no limits. So, of course, we are talking about God's mercifulness. Perfect example that God sent 
plus n person. So in this in, in specific passage where he, he mentioned that not to forgive seven times, but seven for you, you have to do that. So it, it gives the notion of endless, right? So you, you need to be merciful. So have no limit. And another passage, of course, we always, uh, there's a mistake there, woman taking in adultery. Um, so this is also another very good message that, that uh, makes us uh, reason about uh, mercifulness, right? So, so in this passage, basically the teachers of religious law and uh, the Pharisees, they brought to Jesus the woman who had been caught in the act of adultery, right? So that's a very uh, uh, well-studied uh, passage, right? So, so the woman is brought to Jesus, right? So, so it's interesting here because the people who brought the woman, they say that, okay, those are the people who, who were in charge of the laws of the time, right? But what is interesting is that they only brought the woman, right? So they... They wanted to do the right thing, but they, they just used the woman. So there was already like a tendency there, right? So the, and, and we know that from, from that passage, even um, there are a lot of uh, other spirits that wrote about this passage. And even the, the man who did the adultery with her, he was also present in the crowd. So that's something very interesting for us to think about, right? And then they... They were testing Jesus, right? So they brought the woman, and, and then they asked to Jesus, what should we do with this woman? And, and then Jesus knew the one who has never seen through the first stone. So how do we connect this uh, uh, message of Jesus with our study today? So it's important for us, uh, the Mercifulness is something really important for us because if we are not merciful with other people wrongdoings, so how can we expect mercifulness from God, right? So it's basically what Jesus is using here. So let the one who has never seen throw the first stone. So that means nobody like just run away. And then Jesus was alone with the woman, right? And then and who is that woman? That's interesting for us to think, right? So, so she's me, she's you, she's us. So every one of us could be on known as the scribes and Pharisees, the same people who brought her. So, so that's, that's, that's how, that's how uh, Jesus used his parables to teach us, uh, like, very like profoundly teach us right so we, we we are also in the same spot right and then jesus just when he was alone with the with the woman he asked where are you where are your accusers right didn't even one of them condemn you and then the woman said no lord and then jesus said neither do i go and see no more right so here it's another um, important thing to connect with our topic today. One thing that we need to, to, to see from the angle is that mercifulness, right? So you need to But at the same time, that does not mean that you're going to support the wrong doing, right? So that's, that's the message here. So Jesus, Jesus did not condemn her. She was already condemned by herself, by her own consciousness, right? Because she did something wrong. She wasn't alone, but she did something wrong. And she would have to repair that. But that, that's why he said, go and see no more. So, again, it's an act of education. Whenever we are doing something wrong, we need to educate ourselves. To don't don't do that, right? So one way to do that is just to come or just to read the the, the the Bible or read the gospel according to spiritism, read the spirit's book. So we're gonna gather information on how we should act. 
like how we should, well, it will give, a, give us hope, it will give us strength to overcome the difficulties, it will explain why we're going through some, some hardships. And, and that's all important for us, that's all teachings, right? And then it will support us in doing the right things. So in this case, Jesus just gave her this guidance, right? Go and see no more. And if we follow the other uh, books from Kardec, uh, there is also the Spirits book. And, and there is chapter 11 of part three, uh, where Kardec dedicated only for the law of just, justice, love, and charity. It's really interesting why the chapter is tied kind of that all things are the same or are somehow connected, right? So you need to be just. If you're just, you're, you're showing act of love. Because if you love, you're going to be just, right? And if you love, you're also going to do charity. So that's, that's the, the main purpose of this chapter. So the law of God is, is the law of justice, not law of punishment, right? So sometimes, as I mentioned before, we, if we do something wrong, that is, of course, going to have a, uh, an impact. It's going to be like we have to exp expiate. It's just like if I eat too much, I'm going against the law of God. Because something wrong in my body. It doesn't mean that God is punishing me, but it's just a reaction of something wrong that I did, right? So, and that's also for all the moral uh, things that we, that we uh, don't follow, right? And in this specific chapter, I found this question, this question, uh, the, the question eight, elected spirits outside the rights consecrated by human law. What is the basis of justice? The human law and the natural law. So human law, Oh, is something that we follow. We have to follow. And that law is something that changes from time to time. It changes. Something that, that we have right today before it was forbidden. So it's, 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 there is like a changing uh, nature on the human law. But we still need to follow it, right? So the spiritual book doesn't say that we don't, don't have to follow. But it, it also mentioned that on the previous questions that the human law is is changeable, but the natural law, it's the law of God, and that law is immutable. It's already perfect, it's all established by God, and that's what gover governs everything, right? And then in this case, what Kardec is in law, I mean, outside of the human laws that we have to follow, what is the basis of the justice founded on the natural law? And then I just mentioned the the beginning of the answer, and then he says, he refers back to Christ, Jesus, right? So Christ has told you, do unto others whatsoever you would have them do unto you. So that's the golden rule. We know that. But it's interesting that Kardec, on the same question, he gives an explanation because it, it says, do unto others what you would them have them do to you, right? It's not the other way around because it would be mistaken if we do the other way around. Do to you what you would want to do to others. And then that's, that's really profound. I mean, we, we, we just live as, as this, but it's something to think, think about. So we, we always, because we, we always want something good for us, right? And that's what we have to do to others, right? So that's the, the main principle, right? And so that's what has to guide us, right? So that's the basis of justice. So the law should educate, not punish. So even human laws have mechanism to allow the wrongdoers to rehabilitate. So here I'm showing a picture from uh, a jail in uh, Orange County, where they have a lot of programs to help the prisoners to rehabilitate. So I've played. This is where the same thing is happening. So they're having those programs because they see that uh, that's only uh, not only helping them to go back faster to their their communities, but it also prevents them to come back. 
that come for the second time was too high. So then that's why they started to have those problems. So that's interesting. If we have this in our human law, so how can we think about that God doesn't have that, right? So God also is merciful. He's always giving us uh, opportunity. And even if we think about like uh, those terrorists, they will also have the opportunity to, to redeem from their wrongdoings. So, so not to punish because sometimes that we sometimes have this feeling. So we have to be very cautious and be vigilant not to allow us to go into that uh, level of vibration because we should we should always think this should not be happening. But so we should always think also on the person that is doing the wrong thing. There is a prayer from from Bezeha de Menezes, which is a spirit, a very very known uh, spirit that the world is always giving a, um, and and the prayer is only targeting the persons, the people that do wrong things. So he, he does like the other way. Instead of praying for those that, that are the victims, he prays for the ones that are causing the trouble. So it's, it's very profound if we think about that, right? And how about this this um, eternal punishment uh, belief, right? So the heaven and hell, it's another book by Alan Kardec. It has a chapter that talks only about that. So I could give like a whole talk only about, about eternal punishment. And, but I just found this, uh, passage that is really like what I, I want to show you, that the belief in eternal punishment was maintained us at a point to understand. It's, uh, Kardec started explaining that it, it's, it's just, and then the kid, it, it tries to do the, that wrong thing, right? And then you say, okay, if you do this, a ghost is going to show up. Don't go outside. But when he grows, the kid grows, that's not going to stop the kid, right? So the same thing he, he mentions here on this passage. So that idea of eternal punishment had its purpose. <coughs> in the very interesting what Kardec does in this chapter is that he talks about the money that people, uh, they found this is a source of getting money. So it, so that's why still a lot of people insist on this. Idea. Basically, they're, they're making money from this. They live on that, and then they start giving money. They, they, they kind of correlate to that. So, so so even Jesus, when he came in this chapter, I read the whole chapter. Jesus did not, uh, uh, he, he was very cautious uh, uh, talking about the eternal punishment because it was an idea so deeply embedded in people at that time. So he only gave, gave some hints that that was not the case. And they understand it more and more. So that's why he, a lot of things he, he he delayed, right, for the third revelation to come and explain. So that 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 was one of the cases. So the, the, this idea of eternal punishment was so deeply embedded in people that still today we have it, right? So we can have an idea of. Uh, so we we have all we need to readjust. So I think that's the main um, message from that uh, book. As I mentioned that. Uh, there are two passages, one one's talking about God's mercifulness, and the other one is talking about our willing to do. In the, in this, in the passage, it was saying that the lady was not, I mean, I mean the person was, and then what the man says is that it is advised over the resources that he was considered by the heavens. For his repent, repentance, in order to readjust again, another, to the righteous paths. 
So sometimes we, we get so, so deep in our problems, so deep, and then we lose seeing all the room, what we have to do to, to, do, to readjust, right? So we, we need always to think like that. We need to think that we have everything we need. And the situations that we are living, that's also important for us. So the people that we are having problems with, like the, the uh, trouble that we know, somehow it's what we need to, to readjust. And then we need to think about what else can we do, or how to talking to Monique's mother this morning, and I said, okay, this is exactly what we were discussing yesterday, the ones who were here, about uh, the things that we have. And, and just to think about, for example, when you wake up in the morning, and then from the time that you wake up and then you go to that other wash your mouth, like the, the light that you turn on, like the, the, the coffee that, that you make, you know, like the bread. So how many lives are involved in, in having all that, those things come to you? So, and of course, we, we also have our, our, our share of other lives. So you should always think about that and, then, and be grateful for that, right? Because those are all the resources. And even in situations where we're having trouble, like difficulties, we always have like the resources. We have the books, we have friends, we have this house that is always here open for us. So we have our, our family, right? So do, everything is resources. So the, 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 the word is really deep, right? So it's, uh, you can think about everything that we have. And even in the absence of those things, we still have ways to get, right? So sometimes it's, we, we, are, we are lacking some sort of resource, but we have other ways to, to get through our work, so, so that's why we also need to work, right? So we need to kind of contribute so, so that we also have contribution from others, right? So, I think it's a little short on that. That's all I, I had planned today. So remember that we changed our Sunday <coughs> time. So now we have the family study at night. And uh, this pretty nice. Okay. So we're going to have um, the boxes, no? and we're going to have someone directing you.